welcome back to my channel. My name is Kim and let's go on and get started with today's video. I'm going to try to keep myself on track. Don't know if that's going to be possible, but we are going to try. So today I'm bringing you back my series of recently read books um, from this uh, past previous weeks reading. Um, sometimes I try to do these weekly, sometimes bi-weekly, depending on how many books that I read um, within that week. Is it worth um, filming this type of video? Um, if I've only read one book, it's really not worth making a video just dedicated to that one book. Um, this, in this case, I've read quite a few books um, for Questathon. So yeah, I did a really awesome this last week. All right. So the first two books that I'm going to talk about, they are both Kindle Unlimited or KU books. Um, so we're going to discuss those first. I'll put pop up a picture on the screen because my phone does not translate them well onto screen. I tested that out, but didn't work too well. So I'll pop up um, the pictures of these eBooks um, on the screen for you guys. Both of these books are um, part of the Project Arma series that I am reading and I love these books. Um, so kind of a partly recommendation um, books for you guys. If you have ever read Christine Fian's books, um, her Ghost Walker series in particular, these books, the Project Arma books, have those vibes to them. So if you like her work, um, then you will probably like this series as well. They are a lot shorter books. These are less than 300 pages, which are perfect for a readathon. These are military romance or romantic suspense books, but they do have that vibe of military scientists altering, you know, soldiers' DNA and playing experiments with them and creating super soldiers. That concept, that idea, and whatnot. So I really have been enjoying this series a lot. Mason, this is book four out of this series. I, I really did enjoy it. But anyways, you are following uh, Mason Eagle, which is his military name, uh, Navy Seals, who's wh whom you are following, Navy Seals, meets Sage Porter, who has come to um, take care of their team as well as um, Fletcher, who is the newest baby that has been born. Kind of a little mini spoiler. Um, one of the couples has recently given birth um, to a baby, so the next generation. Uh, he's so cute. Uh, so she's taking care of them. And a lot of events take place. Um, some side um, plots have been added into the story. So good. Oh, I loved it. Um, but yeah, so a lot of things went on. Um, Mason kind of got caught in um, caught in a lie that was invasive into her privacy. Um, I understood why he did what he did, um, but he did own up to it. Um, it did cause some conflict between the two, between Sage and him. And they did have to resolve it, and it did cause some trust issues. But yeah, it was so good. Oh, I loved it. I love this series in general. Oh, I love it, I love it. All right, so that was Mason. So that was book number four. And then we're going to move on to Wyatt, which is the, my last ebook that I have read for Questathon. All right, so we've got Wyatt. This is book five of the Project Arma series. Again, ebooks is my format. Um, genre is again military romance, which is also a romantic suspense book. This one you are following, of course, Wyatt. It's the name of the book, of course. His um, military name for the Navy SEALs is Jobs. He is very technology, um, great at hacking, great at finding information on computers. So his name is Jobs. That's his main role um, that he does. He is great at doing all of the tech stuff. So that is his job. <laughs> so this is kind of also if you are uh, if you're a romance reader and you love the um, best friends sisters kind of romance 
um, this is up your alley because yeah, he fall why it falls for Mason's baby sister. <laughs> so she ends up moving to town and I'm going to give you the reason why she ends up moving to town, um, to Marble Falls. This is where all of this takes place. Um, yeah, so yeah, he ends up falling for that, which can, could potentially cause some conflicts between the brothers, uh, military brothers, um, unit, within the unit. It was really good. <laughs> yeah. So if that's a trope that you like, you may like this one. Check it out. Uh, I, I did like it. It was so well done. Um, a lot of conflicts went on in this book as well. Um, a lot of enemies came to, came to town for this one. A lot of people that I was not expecting kind of had some suspicions about one, but I was not expecting another one to pop up um, in that one. That was kind of shocking. So I love it when books can do that, um, have some twists go on. So yeah, I love that one as well. Definitely check it out again. If you like, again, Kristen, Christine Fian, or if you've never read her and you want to check these out because they're much shorter, um, see if you like that kind of um, vibe to your books and then you want to check out Kristen and Fian later You might want to do it in that order Could happen. All right. Yeah, so those are the first two books that I wanted to talk to you talk to you. Oh, wow. I Oh, wow. What is a talk to you? <laughs> Creating my own words <laughs> Yes All right, so Probably my least favorite book that I probably read this last week, and I gave it an okay rating, I believe. Um, this is The Culling Trials, Culling Trials, um, the Shadow Academy book number one. This is by K.F. Breen and Shannon Mayer. All right, so you have The Culling Trials. This had a potential to me to be very, very good, and I found it kind of meh. Um, so again, the, I don't even remember how old she's supposed to be because it really doesn't really say. I think she's around 18, maybe, um, somewhere around in there. Anywho, so she's living on a farm, helping her father. She had an older brother, then there's her, then she has twin younger siblings and who are still in high school from what I can gather. It's kind of weird. And it's more of an urban fantasy, young adult urban fantasy type of thing. Type of book. Not type of thing. Type of book. Um, it's set in our world and then it also has a magical world parallel to ours kind of thing. Kind of, I guess you would say Harry Potter-esque where there's a school within our world that's magical type of thing. Yeah, that's probably the best way I would kind of compare it. Kind of like Deadly Education would be another kind of reference to where it's built within our own world. So that's where you get your urban fantasy type of combo. Those would be my best references of how to explain sort of this book. Anywho, so the premises of this book, trilogy, whatever this is supposed to be, um, I don't know if I'm going to continue it. Alright you guys, sorry if my angles have changed. I had to finally kick my kitty mix out because she kept rubbing and moving the tripod all around the room. But anyways, I really don't remember where I was setting off, but I don't know if I'm going to continue the series, trilogy, whatever this happens to be. This I know is book one. So, but we'll focus here. Um, anyways, again, your basics of this is the academy. Um, it chooses the person in the family um, to go to the school. And it's a very, very dangerous school. You have to go there and it's no guarantee that you're going to survive going to the school. Um, it's not even guarantee you're going to even make it into the school to go there. You have to go through the trials and if you make it through the trials, then you go to the school. Okay. 
Um, her older brother has already been chosen to go to the school and he died mysteriously. There was no um, investigation. They couldn't even bury him. They wouldn't send them the body. It was a bunch of mystery and all of that. So they, yeah, they had to go on as if he didn't exist and so forth. Um, and now another letter has come, but it bypassed her. And then it went on to ask for the youngest brother, one of the twins. And so the story goes on from there. A lot of things happened. Oh, very, very interesting. And another hoity-toity kind of uh, young man came in. Very well-privileged young man who seems to have a leg up into the whole um, contest trial thing that they had to participate in ended up winning this whole goal even though he did nothing and she did all the work for it it was very 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 interesting so yeah don't know if i'm going to i think i might have given it three stars it was just very juvenile and i think that may be why i didn't enjoy as much I'm not sure. Um, tell me if you read it and if the series gets better or if I should just stop at book one. Not sure yet. Because uh, there's a lot of other things that I'm very much more interested in reading at the moment. And I may come back to it later in the year if I run out of the other things that I'm interested in reading. And then I may pick up another one. But at the moment, I'm just going to stop right now here. Unless you guys give me some better ideas that it does get better and it's worth moving on let me know all right and then my last read for this week the longest book that i've read this week this is deadly sting this is book i believe number eight i'm almost to the halfway point because there are 19 books so basically halfway book eight book nine will be my halfway point all right, of this Elemental Assassin's story um, series. All right, so again, you're following Jen Blanca. You guys know I love this series. I do have to take a break because, again, after you've read so many of them that they start almost getting that formulaic type of feel to them. So I'll read one or two, take a break, and then come back after a month or so, read another one or two, take a break. That's why I'm enjoying my ride with it because I went so hardcore with them for the first four or five, then I really, really needed to take a break. But now that I'm getting back into them, I'm falling back in love with the series as a whole. And I can't wait again to see and get my hands on the next book. But I'm enjoying taking time to slowly absorb them. So I'm not feeling rushed through it and all. But I think that's any with any really long series, you need those breaks in between to really, truly enjoy it. Now, if there are only three or four books in a series, then it won't be as bad. But if they're really long, like 18, 19 books, you need that time. So again, you're following Jim Blanco. Of course, there are big and bads coming after her. And this one, it was not quite set up that way. So that was a nice, refreshing change to the whole setup. She actually was having a day off coming from the last book. I hated, <laughs> so hated the way the last book ended. Not because it was a bad ending. It was a bittersweet, heartbreaking <laughs> ending to the last book. And you're still picking up from that loss that it hurts. <laughs> and I just wanted to, throughout this whole book, when that other character gets brought back up and they still cannot get over that trauma, that relationship breaker almost, it's not fully broken, but they still are not back together. Oh, 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 oh. I want to invoke Reba, if you've ever watched the sitcom Reba, where she smacks a van upside the head. That's what I want to do to this other character. I want to step in and go, bam, 
outside the head and get your act together. Because they're so good together. I want them back together so bad. She deserves a happy ending. And I don't know if she's going to get it in this series. And that's killing me. Oh my God, is it killing me? <sighs> yeah. Love this series. That is killing me that I don't know if she's going to get a happy ending. But yeah, so a lot of things went on. Um, actually, it wasn't a big bad coming after her this in this series. She just sort of stumbled into it. Um, thanks to her stepbrother. Um, taking her to events and things went down from there. It wasn't supposed to happen. They were supposed to actually have a nice night out on the town, go to a museum, and have a great evening. And then, of course, crap happens. I'm not going to tell you what all happens, but crap happens because it's Jen, of course. So, yeah. Great story. Love it. I just want her to have a happy ending, but I don't know if she's going to get it. Oh, just, mm, yes. But yes, so all in all, I had a great week. Um, actually didn't read multiple books at the exact same time, so managed to read four books though. And I may start going back to that so I can fully um, focus on one book, um, even if they're really large books. Because um, I think the next book that I am currently reading is Spinning Silver. Um, I think may be my largest book on my docket um, for Questathon. So we'll see. But yeah, I am I am really have happy with my progress. So the only let's get some stats. My page count. I actually read 1,132 pages. In this last seven days, um, started on, what was it, July 1st was our first day of reading for Questathon, so not bad. Um, this did not include an audiobook that I started, which was Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Um, I did not include that in here. One, I haven't finished it, it's going to take me forever. Um, but I didn't add that in page count or anything because um, I'm still listening to it. And it's only did completed books um, for my recently reads. All right. So leave me some comments down below. Have you read any of these books? Have you read any of these authors? And please let me know, is it worth continuing the Shadow Academy series? Because I'm on the fence and I need your input. If you've read it, is it worth continuing? Yeah. So please, again, give me a thumbs up. Leave me comments because it helps my channel grow um, and all the good things. Subscribe if you haven't and all of the things. And until my next video, you guys, happy reading as usual.